Yo, what's going on, Latin Wealth family? Welcome to another episode to Wealth Wednesday, a new weekly show where we're putting out trending information, trending topics. We're talking about different things that are going on in the world from a Latino's perspective for our Latino community. As you know, you turn on the news, you turn on these different social media apps or these different social media accounts. You don't see too many Latinos talking about trending news, talking about what's going on in the world. You don't see too many of us, people that look like Jeremiah and I, or people that look like you, you know, that are listening to this podcast. So we do this for you guys. We do this for our community. Uh, Yeah. Welcome to another episode of Wealth Wednesday. On today's episode, we're going to dive into the power of delayed gratification. We're also going to talk about earnings week what that is and what that means for big companies uh, such as Apple and Amazon. And we're also going to talk about, yo, what, what should you be doing when the hype is gone, when the dust settles and, you know, nobody's talking about that, that trending company or that, that trending um, cryptocurrency, nobody's investing in these things. What do you do in those moments? Right. Cause it seems like we only invest when, when, the hype is around when we have FOMO and whatnot. What do we do when the hype is gone and nobody's talking about these different things? So with that being said, as always, my brother, Jeremiah, how are you feeling today, bro? I'm feeling good, bro. Um, energized. I like the topics that we have. You always pick. I mean, the topics always are good. I say that every time, but I think people, as we build and build, I feel like the topics are getting a lot better. And so yeah. I'm actually energized by the by what we're discussing today, man, because I think that's going to be some good information for people. A hundred percent. And, you know, one of the topics going into delayed gratification, you know, the other day I was scrolling on the Threads app, you know what I'm saying? The new Threads app. Mm-hmm. And I seen a, a, a thread posted by my guy, Jeremiah. And mm-hmm. I'm going to quote what he said. He said, most individuals would rather appear rich than actually being wealthy. Most individuals would rather appear rich than actually being wealthy. That's heavy to me. When I read that, the first thing I thought of was like instant gratification, right? Um, you know, when to de- to delay it and when not to delay it, right? If that's even a case for you, people wanting to appear rich and actually wanting to be wealthy, right? It, it's a common thing, especially in the black and brown community. You know, we grow up not having much. We grow yeah. up wanting the finer things in life. So when we get a little money, when we get the opportunity to buy a new pair of sneakers or that Louis bag or whatever the case is, we're going to do that. We're going to ball out, right? Yeah. But how how much more powerful is it if we delay those moments of purchasing those things that make us feel good or delaying those things into the future to focusing on what is important right now and focusing on like how we can improve our future, right? So yeah. I say all to say, man, this this topic came from me scrolling on your threads app and I seen that. Thought that was powerful, man. But let, let's talk about it, man. Break it down. What made you tweet that or what made you create that thread, I should say? Yeah. Yeah. And uh yeah, walk us through it, man. Um, I think it has to do a lot with delayed gratification. I was actually talking to my guys in the organization and we were sitting, we were just talking about what are your goals and what do you prioritize, mm-hmm. right? So do you prioritize being accepted or for other people to see you as having this or that or, you know, however, whatever, or do you really just prioritize actually getting to, in some cases, getting to the bag or getting to your purpose, mm-hmm. right? And so in a lot of cases, if especially if you're looking at either one, it takes time. And so would you rather just be out here putting money into frivolous stuff like, like you said, going to get that Louis or Oh, I got to get these Jordans. They're like one on one and I got to pay, you know, two thousand dollars for them. Or if we take the examples of other people and really I'm sitting, I'm thinking about Warren Buffett. Right. Mm-hmm. Who, however many billions of dollars lived in the same house in Omaha, Nebraska. Same house. Yeah. Drove a 1999 Cadillac DeVille. Right. Eight McDonald's like a dollar mm-hmm. ninety nine burger or something like he had this set like and it was just crazy because I'm sitting and thinking about all the complexities and stuff we throw into the things we do on a daily basis to try to impress people that don't even Mm. care Mm. that you're trying to impress them. Right. Mm. So that's really why I posted that thread. Cause I was just like, man, just think if 
we didn't even put the money. What if we thought like Bill Gates? What if we thought like some of these people that just I'll wear, you know, Walmart jeans and, a, and some mm -hmm. flip flops or something. Right. Like I, I and, and famously, I think about the picture with Mark Zuckerberg mm -hmm. sitting there at Harvard. Right. And he's got on some flip flops and some jeans. Mm -hmm. And you don't like looking at him. You would never think like where he is now. Right. But I'm saying, why don't we delay that? Why is delayed gratification an issue? Mm -hmm. And I think it's for us, it's mostly cultural. You were talking mm -hmm. about it, right? Brown and black, we for some reason feel we have to show what we have. Yeah. And in the process of us looking to show that, we're really just projecting. I think there's like some deeper mm -hmm. emotional and, and other things that we have going on that we feel we have to show certain things, right? But I mean, we can get into that a little, a little bit deeper, but that's what I really think. And that's why I posted that thread because we were talking about it. And I want people to understand that delayed gratification is worth it. A hundred percent. And you know, what's funny. You brought up that picture. I know the exact picture you're thinking about. Yeah. And to play devil's advocate, I'm like, to be fair, these people are not from where we're, where we're from. They don't 100%. indulge in the things that we like, right? Like 100%. Mark Zuckerberg and you know what I'm saying? Bill Gates. I'm not sure if they into Jays like that. I'm not sure if they into sports and, <laughs> Hip hop culture and all of that, right? So, yeah, I mean, to be fair, there are wealthy people out there that look like us that wear chains that look fly and really whatnot. So, really I don't, I, I don't feel free to disagree with you. I, I don't feel like it's a bad thing, right? But it's the, the purpose wow. that of us having this conversation is delaying those things so yes. you can get to a point in your life where, man, you have the freedom to ball out and do whatever the heck you want, right? And I think. I forgot who exactly said it, but it was it was Ocho somebody. Cinco? What do you say? My bad. Ocho Cinco. Just how he was like, all my chains were fake. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That's another thing, bro. <laughs> he was like, yo, and I'm smart. a fly coach. And Not I was smart. like, yo, he, he, he got it. He understood no, he do. it. He got so, it. I, you know, I just do that because I was like, yo, that made me think about Ocho Cinco because he was like, all oh, these chains are fake, bro. I'm not custom jewelry. I'm, I'm not buying it, you know. No, no that's, that's, that's like... That's smart, bro. Like, even at his status of a celebrity, you know, just to be smart, yeah. just to be safe and smart. If you in an environment where someone's trying to run up on you, go ahead and have these chains. So, like, yeah, he's he's thinking about his safety. He's thinking about well, yeah. he's and I think, man, like he he has said something like he didn't spend any of his NFL checks or something like that. Something crazy. I know Jason Tatum's like that, where the only yeah. money he spends is his endorsement money. And everything else is just locked up. Uh, but I think what I was going to say was, man, I forgot who exactly said it. it was somebody from our community. But he was basically saying, like, I want the freedom in the like, I want I want to have the mindset that I'm able to buy anything. Right. I want to have that flexibility. Can I buy it? Absolutely. Do I want to buy it? Like, I, I don't need it. Like, and I think that's where we could get to as a community. Right. Is having that mindset like, yo, I could buy that car. Do I need it? Not really. But I know I can do it. Like, I know I yeah. can, you know, go crazy and stunt. So, and and to be fair, I'm dealing with delayed gratification every day. Like, <laughs> it, 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 Let's talk about it, it. It, it's not like, it, it's not just buying things, right? Like some examples of delayed gra gratification, it could be scrolling on social media, yep. like delaying what you need yep. to do in life or for the day for yep. some like instant dopamine, some instant pleasure. <clears throat> um, yep. I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily have this, this issue, but drinking alcohol can yep. be uh, that one as well. Procrastinating another huge yep. one, right? Skipping a, a workout, one. skipping a yep. workout is, is another big one, right? Like I ain't gonna lie this morning. I I've been talking that talk where I've been getting up at four 30 and hitting the weights and whatnot, but, Today was not, this morning was not that morning. I delayed. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to keep it real. That's right. But that's accountability. after work, I was like, I got to get it in. And that's one of the reasons why I was like, yo, Jeremiah, can we push this 30 minutes? Because I need to get yeah. this in. Respect. Respect. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, bro. I almost delayed it. Um, that's what's up. Um, but I should say, almost, I almost had that instant gratification of skipping the workout, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. But I delayed that feeling of being lazy, is what I'm trying to say. So, in a nutshell, it, it's little things that we can be dealing with every day. Like I said, it can be as small as scrolling on social media 
where you just zoned out for 30 minutes and you really trying to, what you really need to focus on is building that website for your side hustle or that blog or creating that content, right? I mean, and that's what I'm saying, but add those 30 minutes up, right? Over a week, right? I mean, let's really just look at it. If you did it over a week, 100%. What is that? Like it's an hour every two days, right? So you're looking at almost three hours and then multiply that by four weeks. That's 12 hours a month. Mm -hmm. That's half a day. Like, so really let's get it in. And what do you do in 12 hours? Most of us work 10 to 12 hours. And so you did a whole day of work of just scrolling. Mm -hmm. And so, Crazy, you know, man. the thought process about saving that time and focusing in and locking in on something and then leveling up yeah. and there is a time to celebrate there's a time to relax because you mm -hmm. got to reward yourself for sure that's another thing I'm not saying that delayed gratification says delayed it doesn't say uh continual loss or perennial mm -hmm. right perennial delay and that's not no 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 you're going to reach it at some point and when you do you need to celebrate but i feel like a lot of people be celebrating and or doing things mm -hmm. like you said and getting that in and i'm like what are you celebrating you ain't got nothing to celebrate for that's our opinion. That's that's just us, man. Delay gratification is um, it's something we need to work on as a culture, mm -hmm. as Latinos, as Black people. We have to work on that because other people have gotten it, and it's it's reaped dividends, right, for them in life. And so it's it's this is something we need to work on for sure. And it's just it's a principle, right? Mm -hmm. It's it a is. principle that we need to work on. And the last thing I'll say on this, it's it's kind of amazing when you're in that moment of scrolling on Instagram or buying something on impulse, it's like that excitement and that joy is for a couple of minutes. But once you get that thing or once you have it, it's gone. It's like, now you want the next thing. When or is that ever? You said what? Or you're depressed because you bought it and you know, you shouldn't have, you shouldn't have money was due and you like, bro. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. Yikes. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's a whole yeah. other story, but um, it is love it, love it. Very important um to delay some type of gratification in your life, and that looks different for everybody. So take an inventory. What is it on the day to day that you can delay? What is it during the week that you can delay? Right in the future, yeah. and how you how can you take that time and those resources and put it into something that will overall give you better happiness in the long run, which is freedom. Is what we're all trying to aspire for right one of the things one of the things wealth freedom health time with dope. our family things of that nature mm -hmm. so dope love it we can transition a little bit i want to hit on the quarterly reports and earnings yeah. this week yeah. um from apple and amazon really are the headliners for this week's earning reports um they also are going to release the job reports it's set to release this friday morning as well and some of the well-known companies that are going to be reporting their earnings this week is Starbucks, Uber, PayPal. I mentioned Amazon, Apple. Um, of course, there's always big expectations for Amazon and Apple. You know, Apple is always kind of leaning on the sales of their iPhones and also the announcement of their new VR headset, which is pretty groundbreaking, and pretty dope. So I yeah. think they th this, web this episode is going to come out Wednesday. They announced their earnings on Thursday, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, but for people that don't know what earnings are, I quickly want to break this down, Jeremiah, and I'm going to pass it to you after. Okay. <clears throat> Basically, public companies must present quarterly earnings for every three months, right? Of, of what, what they've been making. This could be reports on net income, earnings per share, earnings from continuing operations and net sales, right? And the reason why this is so important to analyze um, quarterly earnings is because stock analysts, investors, uh, retail investors, they use earnings as a, a ways to gauge the financial health of the company and really to, to understand the future of the company as well, if that makes sense. So very important for investors to listen in on earnings, to figure out like what was all the statistics and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, I want to shift it to you, Jeremiah. What are you, what are your thoughts about earnings? I know you had a couple things. Also, want to hit on how can we benefit from earnings, right? Um, so for myself, 
the way you sit and and the way I look at the earnings, yes, it does talk about the financial health of whatever company that is they're reporting. Um, it's a it's an account of it's an accountability factor, mm, right? Yeah, because yeah. shareholders are putting money and investing into your company, and so you must report what you're doing every quarter. What are you doing with our money? Essentially, it's bringing to account what you're doing with the shareholders' money. Um, and then also, it's a great time. A lot of people use it. Apple used their last um, earnings reporting time, right, to talk about the VR headset, right, and mm -hmm. to talk about and bring. And so, it's also usually a time where companies can, you and know, premiere or present the yeah. things that they've been working on that have been kind of they kind of held them close to cuff, right, and then they can reveal whatever that is. And what you usually see is if it's groundbreaking or revolutionary, you see the stock jump. After they have the earnings, they'll sit, they'll say, we're, we're presenting this, we're bringing this, boom, and you see the stock usually go up. And I mean, that's pretty normal. Me, myself, what I do with earnings and what I would tell most people to sit and do with earnings are look at the overall direction of the CEO, right? And look at the history within the past two earnings before that and see what direction they've been heading in. If every single earnings, although they're presenting something new, if they're constantly shifting their direction, or the focus of the company, that's not a good sign. Mm -hmm. Now, they may, I'm just going to be honest, they may be able to roll the success like an Apple. They could just roll that success right. Right, right. for two or three quarters, maybe even a year, right? They can just roll it. And, and they came out with a new iPhone in January. They may can ride that success all the way throughout the year. But that doesn't mean that it's a healthy, I'm just using Apple, I'm not saying in particular, mm -hmm. but I'm just using it as an example. That doesn't mean that they're healthy. They rode off of one single thing, right? And, and kind of to link this, we talked about Tesla's earnings on the episode back before, and people, the stock lost money, even though they gained money because the people were like, oh, you're going to have to sell more volume mm. because the margin, right, of what you earn per unit has shrunk. That's not a good look. That's not a good formula for us making money as shareholders. And so I think a lot of times what I look at is the two earning cycles before what they're reporting. Number two, as I said, I look and see what their focus is as a company. Has it shifted, right? Is the CEO backing it? Is he changing his, his tone? Did he say something different at the last earnings? Now he's shifting and saying something else, right? Um, and then also, lastly, I sit and I assess what my investments are going to look like. Mm -hmm. um, what is the likelihood based upon whatever announcements or whatever's been announced or whatever's coming out that this company is going to be successful? And by that, I mean, is it a good time to buy? If I already have stock, is it time for me to hold? Because, you know, seemingly it's going to be good. Or should I be selling it? Has it kind of reached its peak? And should I let that go and then move on and try to invest into something else? So Amazon, Apple, obviously people are expecting them to have solid numbers. Um, Amazon is going, I, I think Amazon coming good. Apple will see. I will say this, though, for Apple, for that headset, they're going to have to get the price point right because I don't think that'll go over too well. Um, was it like $3,500, $3,500, $3,700? Yeah, yeah. They're going to have to get that price point right um, for that. There's a lot of talks. There's definitely a lot of talks. They were talking about, remember we talked about Disney and then wanting to cut and shade and stuff like mm -hmm. that. They were saying that depending on how, um, how well Apple does, Apple have been having conversations with, purchasing disney this would be freaking that'd be nuts i i mean i can't see it i think it's a lot to control it's a lot to do but yeah, I, I don't know i mean you have seen cook and Iger having they've been around mm -hmm. each other a lot so who knows maybe they're coming up with an app i mean iphone now disney plus streaming and on the headset and stuff like that that i know that came out but we'll see yeah, the thing about the the VR headset is the price point is not a price point for the average consumer. And no. to be on to be fair, it's not really a device right now for the average consumer. I think we had Carlos on, and it's really for I mean, anybody can buy it and enjoy it, I'm sure, and consume content. But, yeah. but it's really for who who am I saying it's really for? It's really for people that Very are affluent. like the affluent. You know, yeah, affluent or people that yeah. are into tech like that. And yeah. yeah, things of that nature. So definitely agree they need to figure out that price point or come out with maybe that's the pro model and they come out with a, a lower budget model for people to to buy into. 
I wish that Apple, like I said, I wish that Apple and Meta would come together and they just kind of work together because Meta came out with their headset as well, which is much more affordable. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Apple's is, they say it's a whole experience. But given that Meta has the metaverse and spatially, when you put these glasses on, these headsets on, right, you need to access Web3 or the metaverse to see these things. And so I would just think if they would come together and collaborate on it, they could come out with a more affordable headset and the experience would be phenomenal because you have what's actually running the headset and, you know, hardware and price wise, mm-hmm. it could meet somewhere in the middle. But 100 percent they're in competition with each other. So I get it. <laughs> Let me ask you this real quick. How important is it to pay attention to earnings if you're holding into companies like apple microsoft where generally yeah. speaking these companies are going to do well they're always yeah. going to grow um for people that are holding for companies like that is it something that you really need to pay attention to or is it really from for people that are playing the options game it's more it's a lot for options but it's also for people that are very high in the ipl space Mm-hmm. Right. Um, initial public offerings, what IPL stands for, it's when a company's coming out and going public, mm-hmm. essentially. They've been private. So people that play that space um, and try to get in um, on companies that are just starting, just coming out, like that would have been the space to play in 2007, 2006. Right. When Facebook, like all, back back in those times, that's that's the space to play. And so a lot of people try to catch the next mm-hmm. Facebook, the next Netflix. Right. And so for them, it's utterly essential that they look at earnings. But I think everyone should look at earnings overall, right? Um, just simply because it gives you a basis to understand, even though you are holding, it gives you a basis to know where the economy is at. And, and maybe you'll start to see factors and trends before other people do because you were paying attention. And what I mean by that is right now, right, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ is basically ran by like seven stocks. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Alphabet, which is Google, Microsoft. Apple, um, Amazon, Tesla, and then there's a couple others, you know, NVIDIA, and, and then they, they're coming up and, and doing their thing in that. Um, and then there's some healthcare, but it's basically ran by seven stocks. And so you got to focus in on those things to see which way that they're shifting, because it's ba- those stocks are basically controlling the economy of America. Mm-hmm. And so I would say that it's important to pay attention. Um, obviously, options and people that are in the IPO space that they got to pay attention more because it, it basically determines if you make money or not. But if you're investing in um, Google, Apple, stuff like that, they're going to make money regardless. You hold, it'll make money. But you want to know which direction we're going in America. So I think it's important to pay attention, be informed. Another quick question, kind of on the IPO tip. Um, how yeah. do you feel about companies that IPO and investing in these companies? I know there's some people's strategy to kind of I mean, wait you know, a certain period of time before they jump into it. Yeah. Look at the usage case. Look how they did in their private side of things, right? There's mm-hmm. plenty of reports. There's plenty of people that are reporting on the companies before they did their IPO, right? Um, look at the way, look at the numbers. Just look at what was the usage basis? What was the CEO? What were the founders? How did they create it? What was their thought process behind it? And if there's enough years and actual history behind it, because you got to remember some companies stay private. They've been private for a hundred years and they just decided after maybe the matriarch or patriarch of the family died, the mm-hmm. kids decided they wanted to go public because they didn't really want to write running yeah. and stuff. So look at the history of the company. If it has a strong history now, if you're saying like brand new stock type stuff or however, whatever, it depends. It's all according to your risk tolerance, right? Yeah. And your long term mm-hmm. goal as an investor. Like so if you're if you have a moderate to low risk tolerance, it's not for you. If it's moderate high to high, then yeah, maybe so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Love that. Um, shifting gears a little bit, you know, when we're talking about hype, when we're talking about IPO, when some of these companies go in public and there's, there's a lot of hype behind them and whatnot, and even some of these crypto coins that have been hyped up like XRP, right? Um, even threads, I mean, it threads was a platform that I think now there's been different reports lately. They said it, it dipped 40%. And I've yeah. also seen articles that said it dipped 80%. 80% of people are no longer using it, right? Or has, not using it as much. Okay. So the question that I'm I'm asking is, what do we do when things dip, when things, the hype are gone, nobody's talking about it, and people are like, yo, nobody's talking about XRP right now. Should I be investing in it? 
um, yesterday when I checked the price of XRP, I'll check it again right now, but it was around 70%, 70 cents, which isn't mm -hmm. bad. Um, it's still up from the announcement, but sure. I feel like it's not something people, not something that people are talking about right now. What What are your thoughts about, you know, when the hype is dying down, it's 71 cents right now. When the hype you know is down, constantly, you know it's constantly moving. Yeah. I'm looking at yeah, it myself. 100%. Right <laughs> I'm yeah. like, it might be, it might be 80 cents. I don't know. Yeah, no, no, no. You're good. It, it's up 71. Um, if I after the hype is gone from things, right? And people will try to focus in on whether you should do something or whether you should be investing in something. This is where understanding the history right and what the company was based upon and what is the actual viability of that product or that company mm -hmm. in the next 20 years and it could be honestly if you could cut it down to the next 10 years mm -hmm. and i'll tell people something and they always think about it right now it's text time right text time has been since 2000 basically right it's been a tech year techie world right but something that has always 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 made money and outperformed tech overall is the healthcare industry and most people don't even think about it, right? But there's stocks and stuff that have outperformed. And so the healthcare industry took a back seat and people really weren't thinking about it, but it was always the thing to invest in. Mm -hmm. Now that could be the same with a certain tech. Like I was looking and they were saying Intel was dead and then now Intel is making a surge and they've seen some you know, surprising numbers in their earnings that they actually made money. And so just because something isn't hyped doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't have value, right? You got to look at what is being offered by the company, the product. And then, like I said, look at the feasibility or viability of that product or what they're offering over the next 10 years. Because if there's a lot of value, it doesn't matter if people are hyped on it or not. Fads come and go. People wear different clothes. You're not wearing bell bottoms right now, like in the 70s, like things come and it goes, right? And then there's some things that just last. Given, given, I'll give a perfect example. <clears throat> a polo shirt, right? You see me most times, guys. If you'll see me on a on a platform, I'm wearing a polo shirt. That just is classic, mm -hmm. whatever, right? Polo's been in style since the 70s, and it'll go on for another. Like that's what I'm. So there's some things that mm -hmm. they they're not hyped, and you don't really right think about it or however whatever. But it's always good to invest in those things because mm -hmm. it just stays constant, or maybe it just constantly grows. Like people aren't hyping McDonald's right now. People aren't hyping, hyping Coca-Cola. But would you say that that's a bad thing to invest in? Of course not. People are always going to drink Coca-Cola. But nobody's really hyping Coca-Cola. So that, I'm just giving an example of mm -hmm. things that, you know, you really have to see what value does it bring. No, I love that you said what value does it bring and looking at the history of the company. Because, yeah. look, when when things are hyped up and or not even when they're hyped up, when well, yeah, when they're hyped up and they dip down and, you know, what's what's like the most common thing people would say? Buy the dip. Buy the dip. Buy the dip. Buy the dip. I don't necessarily agree with that because Me neither. That, th that thing may forever dip. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's facts. So, no, 100%. Uh, like crypto Solana. I mean, will it ever come up? I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Got a good chance, but we'll see. Um, no, I love that you said, look at the history. Look at the Maybe facts. Um, and I would I would honestly say what's big for me is obviously everybody has to have a strategy when investing. You know, mm -hmm. if you're looking at the history, if it's a company or uh, something that you believe in, I would say know your numbers. Right. When okay. one thing being around entrepreneurs, being in business, one of the most important things people will tell you is you need to know your numbers. You need to know your sales, your cost of goods sold. You need to know how much you're paying your employees taxes yep. know your numbers is like one of the most important things i hear from people and so when yep. i say know your numbers while investing know your numbers where you would want to jump in right maybe xrp right now is 71 cents and your range to, that you feel comfortable jumping in is 50 cents right so when it does hit that when the dust is is no nope, and the hype is gone nobody's talking about it, it's at 50 cents that's your opportunity to jump in so for me, it's it's about knowing my numbers, but I love what you said, knowing the value of the company, knowing the history of the company as well. Yep. 100%. Yep. I, and, and I mean, like you said, know your numbers because that's yeah. not, not everybody's numbers. 
for sure. I could be playing it for for an options, right, or a trade or a swing trade or something. And you're you're thinking about holding it long term. So know your numbers, whatever yeah. those numbers are. Understand, like you said, if it's something you stand behind, you've done your research and it has value and it's a viable product. It's been around. It's probably good to. It's probably you could probably invest in it. It's it's probably gonna you know it'll do something. A hundred percent. I'll say the same thing about threads or Snapchat yeah. or Facebook. If you believe in yeah. these companies, if you believe in these platforms, continue creating on them, C continue to yeah. use them. Right. Like podcasting in 2020, everybody had a podcast. Yep. Everybody was doing it. Yep. We, we, we about to go into 2024 and we still here. You know what I'm saying? I think there was a, a statistic that came out that it said, I don't even remember what it is, but like people are starting to listen to podcasts more and they're cre starting podcasts a lot less, right? If it's something yeah. you believe in, continue doing it, right? You'll keep eventually, pushing. you'll keep pushing. And um, when the dust settles, you'll be the one standing. 100%. I like that. Dope. That's it for today, y'all. We hit some phenomenal topics. If you guys found any type of value from these podcast episodes or this episode in specific, share this episode with three other Latinos that needs to hear the Latin wealth podcast. We got another dope interview coming out this Friday and we got some other phenomenal interviews that I'm super exciting about, super excited about coming up the rest of the month of August. So make sure you share, like, um, give us feedback, whatever you want to do for us, help us out. We're growing this awareness. It's funny. I was just having a conversation with somebody before this call and they're like, yo, um, yo, what you're doing, what you guys are doing is phenomenal. It's just our community is underserved. We don't have yes. enough people talking about financial literacy and entrepreneurship. And, um, you know, we don't have enough men talking about it. Honestly, I don't know if you've noticed, bro, but the ladies are out here are killing it. The Latinos oh, are killing, killing it yeah, when killing it comes it. to yeah. financial literacy. When it comes to men, Jeremiah is always the first one I think of that's talking about it. And then there's a couple other guys for sure, but there's not, not nearly as many. So help us spread the word. Help us yeah. reach more people that needs to hear this information. We don't want to just hit people in Miami, New York, LA, Texas. Like We want to be global. We are going to be global. Yeah. This is going sure. to be the number one resource for financial literacy business for the Latino community. Mark my word. So join us or get left behind. With that being said, catch you guys next week. Peace.